I'm, I'm Paulo Silva. I'm the head of software engineering at Aguera Digital, and I'm here at the VIEW conference. Can you talk a little about, even just over the span of your career, how technology, the, the progression of technology has impacted creatively what you guys can do on screen? I think that it's important like for us to try to couple what we do with what the artist wants. Like, you know, it's always like, can we do that with what we have or can we do it better? So we always try to push the boundaries on every, on every, on every movie. Um, and it's the fact that like, you know, we, we try to not like lock the artist to something that they can't do. And so when most of our improvements come from good artists, and then there are, there are good developers that can actually implement that one. But normally it's the good artist that actually has the idea of like, oh, can we make it that it does this one? Can we just do this as well? So that, that is important. And normally that comes with the shows. When the artists have to face the new shows, then, then they will see like, oh my God, either we do this with like a lot of time that we spent like in the previous pipeline, or we try to change that every time we do a new movie. And we try to improve our pipeline on every movie because we try to get better and better and better. A lot of the conversations I've had uh, at this particular view have also talked about the increase in usage of real time and as well as video game technology. Can you talk a little about how that, what role that plays with what you guys do? Yeah. Um, our approach on the real time is that um, to be able to achieve what they want, the artists will need to see and they will need to have a real time feedback of what they see. So uh, we try to consider that our real time approach. We're not making uh, video games, we're not making like, you know, um, um, game engines for uh, video games, uh, but we definitely try to have, you know, as real time as possible, all of the feedback for the artists that come, that could be from like, you know, rendering um, heavily detailed objects like while inside Maya, while the modeler is actually modeling, to also provide like, you know, simulations that can visualize like heavy simulations in a very fast way. So that's our real time approach. When it comes to uh, Planet of the Apes, for example, uh, that performance capture, a huge part of, of what you guys did in that film, but in general, Weta has been involved with performance capture for many, many years. Um, how have you seen that push things forward over the time that you've been there? I think that um, what grew over the years is that there is a much faster turnaround in like, you know, capturing something and visualize what has been captured. And the fact that we can actually just visualize that while on stage, because now we got a pretty good like real-time renderer that runs inside Motion Builder, can give like both the directors on stage and you know whoever is on stage like a better feeling of what's happening, compared to like having um, you know different stages of like let's get the motion capture data and then let's put the motion capture data into a system that will resolve it and then we can see how it's going to look like you can do real-time changes because you are visualizing the motion capture data in real time. So that's, that's what I've seen improving like over the past years in what we've done for stage motion capture. And you've also dealt, had to deal with things like fur, which I know from a CGI standpoint is extremely challenging. Uh, and also even just the, the, the dealing with stuff like the Uncanny Valley with with, with characters that are more human-like. Um, but, but how far away are we from, from that future that a lot of people were first afraid of, of being able to replace actors in some capacity digitally? Well, I've seen a lot of work like recently in some of the movies, like, you know, for every character that has been like brought to like very close to the screen and was actually a digi-double. Um, I think that that fear is not there. Like, you know, my impression is that it is possible. Like, we just need to know like exactly how can we make it better? How can we make it more realistic? Like, how can we get closer to what it's gonna look like, the original one? And how can we like, say, um, you know, um, confuse the audience to say like, is it CG or is it real? Like, we can probably still, you know, do some work with that, but um, I think we are pretty close in like, at least have the audience to not understand whether it's like, CG or it's a real ape, for example, like, you know, I'll see that work for the Planet of the Apes. And that's the, that's the thing, because these, these apes are still being powered by a real human actor, even if you don't see it on yes. screen. Yes. <laughs> the only thing that happens is that you might not see a real ape doing those things, but, you know, that's the only thing that, you, you know, could let the audience understand, well, it's actually a CG ape, like, it's not, like, you know, trained to do those things on the movie. 
Are we heading though, do you feel like, into a future where right now, if someone's gonna step into uh, a, a CGI or a animated movie and provide their voice, they can literally be any character, anything in the world. Are we heading that way when it comes to performance capture and regardless of what the actor looks like or their age, they can become anything in CGI, but even human-like? Yeah, I think that's that's what it what it's coming like, you know, with all of the you know recent CG movies that and all of the CG characters that we're doing. Like the characters is always modified, like you know, from um, you know it has to be like you know a, a blue alien guy that it you know it doesn't exist in reality, but you know behind that it has the characteristics of the face that will resemble what is the actual you know character, um, and so that actually gives that feeling of like well, what I'm actually seeing could be real, even if it's not like, you know, the actual actor. Um, but it has that, you know, um, resemblance of like, it is coming from that actor that is playing that role. And so at that point you could say, well, it could be an actor like, I remember a movie like Polar Express, like from quite a few years yes. ago, where Tom Hanks was playing every character in the movie. Um, it was a kind of like a big effort, I guess, to get that movie done. Um, you could have seen like, that it wasn't like, you know, properly Tom Hanks all over the places. Like, they needed to show that it was Tom Hanks. I guess if we do this now, like every company can potentially do that, I, I would say, but um, is that today you can see more of the Tom Hanks in all of the characters. So that's, that's what is actually changing. Like, we are able to see the main characters, even if it's like, a baby CG character or an older, like you know, um, uh, uh, character, you can see a little bit of Tom Hanks, like you know, if we're gonna make it today. And what's interesting is we've seen in, in multiple films now recently where they've taken a current actor and made them look very young, like in Blade Runner, or take a deceased actor yeah. and bring them back to life, like in Star Wars. Yeah. So that was uh, that was quite a good move, like you know, from um, from I, um, ILM on, on Star Wars, and I think. I think there are like the decision to to do that comes from like always the production side, right? You know, the, it's production that says like, how do we make this? Do we make it as a CG or do we just say, well, on Solo, they didn't do the full CG actor to be a young Harrison Ford, like it's like another actor. So there was a decision making process that is like, how do you say like whether you want to do a full CG young Harrison Ford or you want to just start with a completely new actor? And I think that it's more like, you know, the, the business case there was like, well, there might be other movies, you know, later on, we just need to get an actor in it. And, and sometimes it's not easy to just get a full CG character, like for the whole duration of, a, of, of an entire movie.